morning. How's everybody doing this day? I want to talk a little bit about our, our, our device management strategy and what we do. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not going to actually read it to you. It's more by way of example. About seven years ago, we decided that the field bus solution for us was going to be Ethernet IP, so we went cold turkey. End of 2006, 2007, all of the field buses were not going to be used, and Ethernet IP was the solution we chose. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because as long as industrial Ethernet's been around, it's still kind of a growing technology, it's still kind of a growing field, and there's a lot of advancements. One of the things we learned uh, quickly was we need to maintain a certain level of performance for devices. That means every, every Tom, Dick, and Harry's device that comes along may or may not necessarily make it onto our bus. So what we instituted was a battery or a series of, well, in this case, pre-qualification questions. So before we put a device on our field bus, I've got a questionnaire of about 36 questions. They have to be answered. About eight of them are got to haves. The rest of them are like to have, and some of them are just like to knows. Um, and actually, there's a few smoke blower detectors in there as well, because not all companies send this off to their engineering team to answer. Many times, it's sent off to a sales guy who goes, "Yeah, we do that. That, yeah, I'm sure we do that too. Yeah, we do that." So, it's important. The purpose for this is to weed out things that are simply not going to be. Um, they're not going to meet our requirements at an early stage because myself and my organization doesn't have time to spend a lot of time spinning our wheels. When we select a device, we, uh, we test it pretty heavily. So there's a couple of things that go along with that. Uh, if you look, it's some basic information. Um, number six is key. For us, the device must be ODVA conformance certified. Okay. We've also started moving towards pushing our suppliers to provide us performance certified devices. Uh, that's not something that they do a lot of today. Uh, that's something that we, and I also participate, I'm not sure many may or may not know of US CAR, that's something that I myself and with US CAR, we're going to begin to push as a requirement for field devices. So once we get the questionnaire, we go through and do a battery of testings. We set established minimum requirements for packets per second. How does it recover? Does it does it meet this recommended ODVA practice? Does it meet this practice? Is, does it provide you know, address conflict detection? There's just an entire list of things that we go through. Um, I have my notes here, and it's, they're conveniently upside down. Um, so, and when we started this a few years back, I would say the list probably had half a dozen questions on it. And by experience, so, so we developed the list by design, this questionnaire. We've expanded it based on experience, right? We've run into some really interesting things uh, that we hadn't expected. Some of our facilities um, have networks before we got involved that could be as large as 800 flat devices, right? So it makes for a very, everybody has to play well together in that environment or things aren't going to go well from a manufacturing perspective. Uh, in the interim, we've architected, laid out, decided what goes on, how it goes on. Um, and from a benefits perspective, we don't have downtime relative to field devices. I don't have unexpected behavior relative to field devices. When I put something on our field bus, I know how it's going to behave. I know what it's capable of sustaining, and I know how quickly it will recover in the event there is a problem. Right? We have a very detailed set of metrics. Um, from a benefits perspective, what's that given us? Well, two things. Number one, we can deploy very quickly. We're not deploying a bunch of devices that we're not familiar with. We don't have to worry about what it's going to do when we plug it in. And we also have a very good set of defined metrics and measurements we've taken over time using a lot of these devices. So we know how far we can push the network and to what extent we can go before we're going to run into problems. So that's on the front end. Back end benefit is we don't have downtime due to field devices unless it's simply just a physical failure. I don't have performance-related downtime events. I don't get calls for that. Most of my plant guys don't deal with that. We simply don't have those. So from a benefits perspective, that's huge, right? Maintenance on the plant floor and our ability to launch quickly. That's another benefit. From a footprint perspective, we have, and I've lost count now, we have 35 facilities globally 
and we use Ethernet IP specifically in every one of those facilities on all of our manufacturing systems. From large, couple of hundred football field long assembly systems down to single, small, standalone stations. We also connect all of those back in through an asset management package that allows us to back up and monitor the health of all those devices. We've layered in security around that, so we have a very, very well constructed security uh, plan around all of our field devices and all around our, our, our field bus. <coughs> uh, and I'm assuming we're taking questions at the end type of thing, so uh, thank you.